तो बेसिकली आज का ये है कि मैं सर विल गिव अस अ ब्रीफिंग और ब्रीफिंग देने के बाद जो है यू पीपल कैन गो इन द स्टॉल्स आई एम सॉरी फॉर दिस दिस इज वेरी स्मॉल रूम एंड इट इज कमडे इज अस वी हैव विद अस हरि बाबू सर श्रीवास्तव सर हु इज डायरेक्टर जनरल टी एम देन वी हैव दास सर हु इज डी जी ई सी एस सुमा वर्गीज मैम शी इज डी जी एम सी सी Basically, I belong to the ES cluster, that is Armament and Combat Engineering. 
primarily it is meant for the land forces and naval. So most of our uh, items, the products that we have developed and technologies, they are basically addressed to the land systems. But as you are aware that armaments, which include right from small arms to bombs, to warheads, to you know, uh, pilot ejection systems, so they are everywhere. So uh, here in this uh, particular uh, uh, Air of Aero India, we have showcased <coughs> some of our air delivered bombs. Many of them are uh, on the display. And uh, now we are working out on the precision guidance kit for those you know, uh, air delivered munitions. Apart from that, we have a number of warheads which are there for the Air Force use. And then we have flares which have got the high energy materials and they work as a decoy. You know, they are released from various aircrafts. So those are also on the display. Uh, <coughs> We have uh, developed the, you know, the seat ejection seat for the pilot, life-saving uh, product for the pilot seat ejection seat and then several pyro cartridges, they are developed in the AS cluster, they are also on the display. And uh, very recently we have come out with an engine, which is an 180 HP engine, which is meant for this tapas, our UAV. So this engine and its uh, FedEx has been indigenously developed and very shortly, very soon this uh, particular system will be a part of TAPAS. So we will have an indigenous engine for the TAPAS in the time to come. And then... Uh, uh, Sorry, what's the name of the engine? It is, uh, engine name is not there, but uh, it is basically meant for the UAV TAPAS. So what is the capacity of the engine? 180 HP. 180 HP engine, it has already been now flown up to 17,000 feet altitude and it has worked satisfactorily. So which engine are using in Tapas? Uh, as of now, Tapas has got a uh, imported engine, but we are going to replace it with the indigenous engine. Which engine. country? Which country? That I do not know. I think the aero cluster, somebody would be able to tell you. By when would it be replaced? By when would it be replaced, uh, sir? Very shortly, maybe in the next six months, we are going to replace it. So we also have with us Siddiqui sir, uh, who is the Director General of NSF Level Science Common uh, Materials. Well, I am nascent to this cluster at this point of time. I just took over and uh, essentially, yeah, uh, essentially the cluster. Just hold it. Yeah. Uh, the cluster works on uh, the naval systems and uh, three laboratories are working on the naval systems and three laboratories are working on developing the materials, materials for the various of applications. So first I'd like to give a brief about the materials laboratories, three laboratories are there, Defense Metallurgical Research Laboratory, Defense Laboratory uh, Jodhpur and also the NMR. So, these are the three laboratories which are working on the various of materials aspect of it. And uh, different metallurgical research laboratory, they are working on a host of uh, material systems development which is associated not only with the aeronautical, also for the various of the naval applications and also for the land applications like water and all auto steel circuit. And quite a few of indigenization activities have happened inside this laboratory. Uh, so be it in terms of developing certain of the disks which are high cost value. When I say disks, these are for uh, the uh, engines uh, which are operating as legacy engines as well for indigenous applications and these have been indigenized. And uh, apart from that, a host of other new technologies, be it in terms of uh, the red ohms technology and all which are very, very key and critical technologies, these are being developed. And uh, similarly, if we come to the uh, laboratory DL Jodhpur, now as you all are aware that uh, India is launching a fifth generation fighter aircraft program. So one of the major predominant drivers for the fifth generation fighter is uh, stealth technology, which comes from radar absorbing materials, uh, structures, paints and whatnot. So that laboratory along with a few of uh, my cluster laboratories are spearheading those efforts. And we had also a program what we called as a stealth materials and process program which was funded by ARNDB 
and it has fetched some very good results as a precursor program for developing these technologies to translate into a product framework so that we are going to launch as a national program for the stealth technologies which is a highly protective technology anywhere in the world as you all may be aware who are in the aeronautical domain so like you no know, that's one area what like you no know, we are going to like you know, launch as a national program so apart from coming now to the naval systems laboratory underwater weapons and what not these are all our areas of work and uh, the sonars for various of like you no know, underwater platform unmanned uh, Uh, autonomous vehicles underwater vehicles and all these are the areas so yeah so uh, uh, can you elaborate about the stealth a little bit what, what is the stage what kind of are uh, you making a uh, uh, like you no know, basically if you look at in a broad way if you look at uh, the stealth comes under various of categories if we talk about so without going too much of into the details be it oral visual then ir and uh, the radar so radar cross section these are the four broad verticals and each one needs to be like you no know, Worked upon, and then we need to take the technology levels to a stage wherein we are able to translate that into. So, is it something uh, about beta material, uh, the invisibility it block? It is one aspect of it. Beta materials form a key aspect in one of the technologies. What? Because only two nations have. Uh, yeah, quite a bit of activity is going on in some of our academic institutes with respect to this beta materials. What? No, you just were referring to. Yes, they are going to like play a significant role. The ratio of localization. Uh, with respect to. Uh, well, like you no, know, at this point of time, as I mentioned, since just a little while. Is it a technology? Well, these are like you no know, evolving, very very critical technologies. Typically, anywhere in the world scenario, if you look at like you no, know, from the time like you no, know, you start seeding these technologies, it's close to about ten uh, years or so. As I said, we have done quite a bit of uh, work on this, so we should be able to. So, what point does the amp? It has to be in the sync with the amp. Right. So, given the anchor timeline, where do you see? That is exactly what, like, no, we are trying to work so, upon. And that the plant sizes, just, 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 just let me. So, uh, question answer uh, session can be yeah. there at the main district where he will show you the circuit okay. also. I think that will be better because uh, we are facing short of time also. Uh, we have DG ECS to face it. Okay. Thank you. I think the main theme on which we are working these days in the country is DRDO is going to develop technologies and it will be translated into the systems performance through the industries. That's why in this Aero India, most of our complete finished products are being displayed by industries. And what we are focusing more is on the technologies. Incidentally, I come from electronics, so all my cluster systems are working on electronics, and electronics is like the soul of all the systems. So whether we talk about fighters, whether we talk about ship, we talk about submarines, we talk about aircrafts, talk about tank, everywhere the systems are there. So in the positive of the time, probably. I'll touch upon few points. See, one of the prime things which we are doing it is on the radar, which electronic is on the LRD is doing it. About Uttam, you might have all heard about that kind of a radar. All along, India was importing radars from various countries. Today, we have developed Uttam. We have developed, we have flown, we have tested in all class of performances for the weapon classifications, for the tracking, for getting the total segmentations and total performance. It has been outperforming all the contemporary radars around the world. That's the kind of certifications we have got, and that's the reason we're happy to announce that our our fighters, our LCS, are all going ahead future with all the Uttam integrations. It is not LC alone. LCS variants we are coming out all further future aircrafts, and incidentally, the aircrafts which we got from Russia, from other places, everywhere we are going to phase out our old radars and coming out with Uttam. That's not only just a choke of the foreign actions which are going out. It is more of our technology supremacy of India over all its contemporary radar owners in the world today. That's the kind of an achievement which I've done. Just to mention one achievement of it, I think that's what has been protocol defined in our stocks. This is about radar, and a class of radars which are the fighters require have all been controlled, and I'm very happy to say it's a total industry base which has been developed. It is not only the design, the total supply chain, system integration, LSI, everything has been done in radar. Coming to flip to the other one, so EW systems, electronics warfare happens to be another systems where over the years, over the decades, we were importing. And today, whether you talk about ESM, whether you talk about CSM, whether you talk about RWR, you talk about jammers, the entire fleet of systems have come up. Developed by our labs called DLRL, and along with Castic, together we are able to develop it up. And today, on the various pod forms, distributed form, internal form, external forms, all those systems. This has been tested. This has been qualified. In whether it's about Jaguar, you talk about LCA, you talk about Amcar, future, whatever it comes out to be. Today we are ready, self-sufficient in EW system. Sir, if, Uttam Radar, how many we are here? I will come to that. I will answer all your questions when we demonstrate it. Let me complete the flow. 
Now today if we talk about the electron optics, you know all the kind of pods, all the kind of multi-generation electron optics which over the years we are importing from Israel and all those countries, we will be very happy to see 550mm and 55kg with 8 sensors, one of the most densely packed electron optics today of the world has been realized, flown none other than it has been flown in the Rustam and all the captures has been done and most of the captures you people have seen also and along with the hugely highly bandwidth data link it has been transmitted back so today we are completely self sufficient so that all airborne electronic systems are concerned light from 35 kg 25 kg 55 kg and further down the not only that, in fact, when you are talking about the protection of the fighters, it is not one electrophysics which helps. We have to have missile approach warning systems, you know, the wide angle things that from wherever missile approaches we detect them. Those kind of systems we have developed and that has also been demonstrated here. Infrared search and track systems, again another one which was Leonardo and other countries from where we are importing. Today the lab has developed the systems, it is on the lab testing. After that it will be integrated, I think within one, one or one and a half years we should be able to demonstrate. Coming to communications, the last one, software defined radio we talk so much and so much about. Today our software defined radios are flying whether we talk about AR, whether we talk about NC and all that. And coming for the fighter, it has already done the test flights and the work is still going on. I think next six to eight months country will be completely self-sufficient so far as HDR is concerned. In a summary, all kind of electronics which we dream of, all kind of electronics which country was dependent on all foreign countries. Today not only that we are self-sufficient, we are ready to export most of them to the foreign countries because they have benchmarked the world standard. I think that's in a summary to what we do. So we have digital Sir, so so how many radars are made? Okay. What is the production line? What are, how will numbers so The production line is with HL today. As you know, HL and LRD together, we had the TOT. We have transferred the TOT. The production with the supply chain with Bell and all the supply chain has been going on. So the, concurrently it is becoming ready. See, Uttam as it is ready, but Uttam has to get into the our LCA and together it has to fly as a production order. That the is first the process. Sorry? When will the first Uttam be put on LCA? So it should be in another two, two and a half years. On the Mark 1A? Yeah? On the Mark 1A? It could be on the Mark 1A or maybe we can go to Mark 2. I think he will be the Mark right answer. Day, Mark 1A itself will go. We are ready. So for that purpose, I think Vijay Ana will be in there. So just on SDR, yeah. you said uh, we were going to sell, so we were going to save SDR uh, for the uh, Indian Army that we are looking for, but you have a power. All of them. In fact, I'll be happy to know Indian Army SDR as a landmark today, about 32 <coughs> systems is ready. They are all out for the field testing this month. And once this is qualified, nearly in hundreds of them will be ordered. Supply chain has been defined. Coming to the fighter, as I said, already on the helicopters we have proven, we have proven it on the fighters to the voice level. As it comes to the data, Manet and L band, another I think four to five months we should be fully ready and after that no report, import required. And it will have interoperability. So whichever the SDRs, earlier Army has, Navy has acquired, they will be able to talk to each other and a complete network of a synergy of SDRs will be developed. So, uh, Dr. Babu Shivasala is the mic. So, as you have heard so far, the labs are developing the technologies along with industry and making the products for today's requirement. But then we cannot stay back on that requirement because tomorrow the technologies will move on, the requirements will move on and the adversary will also have higher technologies. So what is required for tomorrow, that is where I begin. And uh, along with the laboratories, we work out the roadmap for the technologies, we work with the academia, we work with primarily smaller industries, those who, have, who are dynam more dynamic than the uh, major industries, the startups, the MSMEs. So all the technologies required for tomorrow's war, tomorrow's defense, they are uh, sort of funded and facilitated by the uh, cluster. Uh, I would not go into main, uh, many technologies because it is for all the clusters that we have, whether it is naval, material, electronics, uh, aero or MCC, everywhere we are uh, pitching in. But the, just two things I want to tell you, today in the afternoon, Honorable RM will hand over one product to Indian Air Force and this is for predictive maintenance of the aircraft. You can see how the aircraft is behaving and with respect to that data you can predict the when the uh, support for maintenance is required. So that product today Honorable RM is going to hand over. The other one, the product is going to be handed over to DG Ada in the afternoon, again for the LCA. So these are the two things that will happen today and in the recent, very recent past, a new drug has been, it's not a new drug the world is already having but our country will produce for the first time. It has been uh, produced, certified, this is to take care of the nuclear radiation. Then there are uh, technology developments that have happened for high altitude uh, drones. Technology developments have happened for digital video transmission and processing. So like that, multiple products are today available from 
smaller industry, the startups and the MSMEs. Our aim is to enable the startup and the uh, MSMEs and the academia to bring out new technologies that have not been into the system so far from wherever, either from import or from our own technology. So that is how we are trying to bring in the synergy between the DRDO labs, the industry, the lead system integrators and the smaller uh, supply chain. So they will have a continuous business potential for the time. And the technologies will come from the academia, sometimes directly to the industry or sometimes via DRDO, <coughs> depending on the complexity of the technology. So I would just say that and if there are any questions, we can take them. Yeah, so okay. So, okay. Uh, this academia, what I said just now, today we have 15 centers of excellence in various parts of the country, right from Jammu to Goyam to uh, north to south, and uh, from Mizoram to Gujarat, east to uh, east west uh, corridor. We have 15 of them, and uh, we have 65 research uh, technologies that we have given to the academia. They can put up the project proposals and we can work with them. And also we have four research boards. One research board is specializing in aeronautics, ARDB, what uh, my colleague uh, DJ NSN spoke just now. The ASMAP products are going and there are multiple products that we are doing in ARDB. Apart from that, we have life sciences research board, armament research board, and uh, naval research board. So all the technologies at lower TRLs, they are taken care of by those. We have another scheme called uh, extra mural research where the technology readiness level is absolutely nil. We are just talking about that phenomena. That phenomena also can be supported by DRDO and we take that uh, also. So this is how we are trying to promote industry as well as the academy. Thank you. Okay. Uh, that one, I think I come from the cluster that is invisible. You don't say anything but that moves most of the things what you are seeing as a big system. Basically, uh, MCC stands for Microelectronic Devices, Cyber Security and Computational Systems. So these are the main three uh, verticals. And today when we talk about the warfare, which is non-kinematic, that is where we are. We are working in the area of cyber security. We are also in the area of uh, artificial intelligence, where we the <coughs> aspects and from the point of semiconductor industries, all the fields, what the radars, what uh, my colleague from uh, electronic cluster spoke about. It is something like Intel inside, we say, but we see the computers outside. But what moves the system is uh, something called the silica chips. We all know how much denial and what regime we are in. So today I am proud to say that we have showcased some of the products of silica chips that are used for sensing applications, especially in terms of uh, radars, communications, uh, electronic warfare, any of those things, that is what we do basically. And second is today we are moving towards the miniaturization of the systems and you see some of the MEM systems that are available and that also has been showcased. Apart from this, we also have today, we are worried about the navigation, the maps, the way it is handled. So today we are doing the EOT of one of the map related uh, aspects where we have developed the maps at Indian level and it has been handed over so that these maps can be used for our services especially in terms of doing satellite or mapping of the satellite and building artificial intelligence over that. That is what is one of the things that is being done. And the other area which we are talking today is on the quantum because that is where the security comes from. And today we have showcased quantum uh, generators, we have it. And we also have, apart from this, uh, a certification for all the security products. Whether it is communication, SDR is being talked about, but wrapped around on the SDR should be an encryption. That is invisible, but that is what makes it secure. So that is the field where we are working on and some of the products we have showcased in the store. Well, unless the ma'am says that this is okay and uh, because secure, it has to be secure. Ma'am, I have a question in case you permit me. Uh, like uh, we have seen that our country is growing uh, very fast in uh, defense manufacturing. A lot of MSMEs coming up. Uh, the security of MSMEs, whatever they produce, the classified data uh, of our various forces, 
that can be hacked uh, by ransomware and all. Yeah. So please uh, tell us how 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 you can uh, make those systems and those MSMEs or even big companies are not. Uh, yeah. True. Uh, that is where. So we are basically amending the cyber security rules. Even at NSCS, we are working on that. Basically, because it cannot be handled at single level, it has to be handled at the national level, and that has to be driven down. That is what we are working with. That. But per se, at the DRDO level, we have come out with a policy now. How the MSMEs probably, I think, uh, one of my colleagues uh, from uh, Semilac, CE Semilac, he will be able to show you or demonstrate to you how we are going to have a cyber. Uh, uh, cleared uh, exchange of data between the MSMEs and any of the certification aspects that are related to defense can be handled through a web portal. And so that probably so he, will be, he will be showing right. it somewhere out there. So, yeah. We have DG Ada with us. Uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Right. Yes, yes. Loud and clear. I am from ADA and uh, we are developing uh, combat platforms. What we have showcased here in Aero India is of course uh, the LCA Mark II, the Amka and uh, the Twin Engine Tech Base Fighter. In addition, the Navy, LCA Navy is also showcased because that is a very important platform for us for technology development. Currently, trials are going on, on the trials and we are successfully uh, conducting those operations. In addition, we have the Amka simulator with the state-of-the-art cockpit and the side stick, which is another new technology we are taken up and have developed it quite uh, successfully. And we have also demonstrated the actuators that we have developed, the DDP actuators, which are the advanced actuators, which is now being made in the country. And for the Amka, the actuator is already available. So that is also demonstrated. And the internal weapon bay for Amka, we are seeing the F-35 operating there with the internal weapon bay. So we have developed the same indigenously. And the working model of that is also shown in all of this place. Uh, other than that, today the activities are LCA, as has come out from all my sister labs. We are proving all the indigenous scenarios. That is one of the main activities that is happening in all the LCA prototypes that we have. So the radar, the EW, the weapons, Astra for example, saw everything. We are testing on LCA. And since all the avionics is indigenous, we can do it very easily. And within a few months, we can make it ready for uh, testing and then qualifying it for squadron. So that is the thrust today. Of course, of the Navy, as I told you, we are doing the trials and that is feeding in, in a big way. We are understanding how to design naval carrier aircraft and we have progressed very well there. As far as Mark II, the drawings are ready now and the manufacturing is uh, commencing. Amka, we have reached the critical design review stage. That is, the design is complete. And uh, TEDPF, we are in the preliminary design and that should also now move very quickly. So these are the main activities that we are doing. Yes, yes, that is the primary that is the primary target. G414 is the engine for LCA. It has been identified. No, no, no. That is that is a different system. Mark II always had G414. This was a global tender that was done in 2000. Well, so Mark II always had the four and the aircraft is designed around. So at this stage you can't talk about any other. It will be a seventeen ton. Seventeen and a half. So the tech we have the same engine? It is probably G four. It's a how far we from the design of the Design as I said, we are in the preliminary design stage. So the basic design has been completed. Plus the books are getting credit from the buyers. We are doing around the clock in Goa as well as on the Canada. So that is the going in the encoding mechanism has now been we are progressing very well and we are trying to take inputs from the other programs. 
Will the wing fold reduce its payload carrying capacity? No, no, not really. It can carry payload on the wing. So we fold it. Rajalakshmi ma'am wants to say, end up with a note. I started thinking about the entire thing. Now I would like to just give you two lines to take on the lab, on the surveillance system. So our lab, uh, central airport system, it works on airport surveillance. So we have delivered the NETRA, AWNC aircraft to the users and now we are working on other spectrum of surveillance systems like air to ground surveillance, air to surface and uh, passive surveillance. So we can see all the aircraft models and uh, the agreement related to the Thank you.